We move to other stories. We'll bring you more updates from that program later in the day. But at the time Ghana's COVID-19 cases peaked, Joy News brought you a number of stories about persons who had succumbed to the virus or put up a spirited fight against all odds. Most of these stories were about adults. Today, we'll tell you the story of 12-year-old Georgina Lamte. She's been left with severe complications and is still on admission as the Adar Government Hospital after being infected more than a year ago. Bernice Abubeidu Lanza has more. The COVID-19 virus sneaked into Georgina's system and almost robbed her of everything, her speech and the use of her legs. Her family is not sure where she may have picked it from. She's intelligent and strong-willed, her mother says. Perhaps it's that inner strength that has kept her alive. More than a year after contracting the virus, she's still on admission at the Adar Government Hospital. Georgina is frail and her eyes look like she's got a lot to say, especially about how she spent about four months on a ventilator at the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit, PQ, of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Her mother tells us about the complaint that has turned out to be the family's worst nightmare. My daughter complained of pain in her leg when she returned from school. From there, she couldn't walk again. So I brought her here to the Adar Hospital and we were transferred to Kolibu. We found out there that she had been infected with a virus. I meet Dr. Wusu Setre, head of the PQ at Kolebu. He takes me to the ward where Georgina stayed. One of the feared complications is that sometimes the paralysis can affect the muscles that help you to breathe. And in her case, it did. So initially we had to intubate her, put her on the machine. And when the test result of COVID came in, we had to send her to UGMC. So it was at UGMC, uh, recovered. We were able to pull the tube out. She was able to breathe. And then we, they referred the child back to us. And then with physiotherapy and the child was able to go home. Then the child worsened and then came back. So when the child came back and we put her back on the machine, Every time we attempted to remove the machine, the child arrested on us. I mean, by arrest, I mean, if we don't put the child back on the machine, the child was going to die. And this went on for a period. The child spent about 120 days on the ventilator. Eventually, we had to make a hole here and then put a tube so that the child could breathe through something unexpected nobody knew but there's a long-term complication of covid mm -hmm. by the time the child was going home she was all uh, the limbs were all stiff uh, we needed a lot of physio and even the tube we need a lot of care so we had to send her back to the hospital that referred her, her to us for them to teach the parents how to take care of the tube what we think actually is that the child got what we call a recurrence a reinfection of it and that is what uh, led to her coming back to us. So for this particular child, we think everything that we saw, even though it has been do documented in medical literature um, as Guillain-Barré syndrome, we think the trigger here is the coronavirus infection that she acquired. Keeping her on life support for that long was an act of sheer generosity. Georgina's 82,000 CD bill is still outstanding. She had become family and the nurses and doctors just couldn't pull the plugs on her. Georgina's health has been greatly impacted. Her family is staying strong for her, but the incident has also taken a huge emotional and financial toll on them. Things are difficult for the family. What to eat is even a problem. Georgina's brother has stopped going to school. There's no money. 
I'm a widow and an orphan. I have no siblings. I am all they have. And I'm unable to do my usual petty trading because I have to be here for her. Doctor says she may recover fully and though slowly and be able to return to school. She was in class five when the sickness struck. My daughter is strong-willed and hard-working. She and her brother always received compliments from their teachers. They have always asked me to pray for them so they would finish school and take care of me. Detecting COVID-19 can be very tricky, even to the trained eye. The global medical community is still working hard to understand the virus, especially how it presents among children. The first child that we diagnosed in this unit of COVID-19 was on this one with an intubation and a ventilator on. Unfortunately, we lost, we lost that child. This child was about eight, nine years, and it happened around the time that we were on lockdown. And they were observing all the protocols according to parents. This child presented with what we called rabies-like syndrome, like when a dog with rabies bites somebody, the way they behave, aggressive, spitting at each other, trying to attack us and everything. And parents were so sure that this child had not gone out to be bitten by a dog. They didn't have a dog in their house, and yet that child was exhibiting those symptoms. Something very baffling. So we decided, okay, there's a new kid on the block. Why don't we investigate for coronavirus infection? And voila, when the results came, it was COVID. Those that come in with severe conditions, some of them come in, in fact, most of them come with what we call the neurological deficit or manifestation, brain things. So we have a child that came in, uh, two, two siblings actually, they came in uh, in coma. So we thought this is in our environment, cerebral malaria is the commonest. We started the treatment, we did everything and still the child was resolved, re recovering, but it was very slow. So we screened the COVID for the two of them, one tested positive, the other tested negative. There are others that also come with fever, itchy throat, sore throat, and then we test them and they come positive. While the genus family waits for a miracle, the WHO has warned of a possible third wave in Ghana. Health officials are racing against time to stay on schedule with vaccinations. The scary multiple waves of this pandemic continue to traverse borders as everyone is at risk. Babies lost, children left with physical disabilities for life, all because they contracted the deadly coronavirus. We can't say this enough. Please try your best, stay safe, observe the protocols, and that's how you can stay alive in this season. Benis Abubedulansa for Joy News. You're live on Joy News Desk with me, Daniel Dazi. Up next is sports.